Okay, so we're going to be looking at chapter two, which is Argand diagrams. Now, Argand diagrams sound like they're going to be scary, but really what they are are just ways for us to represent complex numbers um, in a visual kind of way. So we're going to learn about how we put these complex numbers in a particular form, which is called the modulus argument form. And the most interesting part of this chapter is going to be about loci and regions. And all of this is going to make a lot more sense when we proceed with this. So let's get started and try and answer actually what is an Argand diagram. So an Argand diagram, it says here that just as x, y axes were a useful way to visualize coordinates, an Argand diagram allows us to visualize complex numbers. So normally when we think about normal numbers without this imaginary axis that we've got here, this is usually how people would think about um, numbers. They think about a number line, really. Um, and what happens with an Argand diagram is to be able to add in the imaginary numbers we then add in this additional axis, which is sort of like the y-axis. What this allows us to do is to take a complex number, which remember is a mixture of a real number and imaginary number, and to be able to plot them as a coordinate in two dimensional space. And suddenly you get some really, really interesting properties that happen here. So let's just quickly read what I've written. It says very simply, a complex number x plus i y can be plotted as a point x y. So it's really just saying we can take a complex number and make it become a coordinate. The x-axis becomes the real axis and the y-axis is the imaginary axis. The plane or the 2D space that is formed by the axes is now known as the complex plane or the z-plane. Um, just to remember, the real axis comes before the, ima the imaginary axis, a bit like x comes before y, because most of the time when we write one of these numbers, we always have the real part, then the imaginary part in that order. So really straightforward for these first bits. We're going to plot these um, these complex numbers on the Argand diagram. So we have 1 plus i. Well, that means there's going to be 1 on the real part and 1 on the imaginary part. So we can just plot that there as a little point. Usually a cross or a dot will do for these. So that's that first one done there. And then we've got minus one plus two i. So we're going to go to minus one on the real and two on the imaginary. So that's what that complex number looks like. Um, sometimes you can draw them with a line so that you can actually see that property of them as well. Uh, if you do them just as a point, that's fine too, whichever way you prefer to do this. We've then got two minus three i. It's going to come down here. That's two across and three down. Again, you can draw it to the origin if you want to. This one is just minus two i. So it hasn't got a real part, which means it's going to have a real part of zero, but it's just going to have an imaginary part of minus two. So that one is actually just going to fall on the axis. I might add these lines in, but like I said, they're not essential. And then our last one, you might need to do a little bit of manipulation first. So I'm going to expand these brackets, first of all, so that the minus minus 2i becomes plus 2i and the minus and the plus 3 becomes minus 3. And then remember, you might want to switch these around so it becomes minus 3 plus 2i. So I'm going to go to minus 3 on the real part and 2i up here. Pretty straightforward. Um, and we're going to be able to do a lot more interesting things with these very soon. So why might we actually want to do this? Why might we want to visualise complex numbers? Well, just with standard 2D coordinates, Argand diagrams help us to interpret the relationship between complex numbers in a geometric way. Looking at these things that we've got here, we can just see them as like a pair of numbers, really, and it doesn't really tell us very much. But as soon as we start putting them on a plane, we start to spot properties that weren't necessarily obvious that they were there. So, for example, this first diagram here, this should remind you of some stuff from chapter one, where we said that the complex roots of a polynomial came in these pairs, these complex conjugate pairs, A plus or minus BI. So you can see here, these two are going to be the same real number, but the imaginary number is going to be the same, but negated. So you get this kind of symmetrical pattern across the real axis, which is what I've written here. It means when it's plotted on an Argand diagram, the real axis is a line of symmetry for solutions of polynomial equations. And this gets used a lot in lots of problem solving questions. Later on in this chapter, we will see that you can do sketches of some loci and you get some really interesting properties of things like circles appearing. So I'll touch on that a little bit later on. And this is from year two. This is um, roots that you can do, complex roots um, of, uh, sorry, nth roots of complex numbers. And when you get to this part in year two, you will find that when you solve equations like this, z to the power of four equals one plus i, that the roots of this are spread out equally. Um, 
sorry, this, they are the same distance from the origin and they are equally spread out around. So you can see all of these angles here must be 90 degrees. And unsurprisingly, it's 90 degrees because it's the power of four. You can think about how that would change if it were different powers. And last of all, you may have seen an image like this before. This is the Mandelbrot set. And the Mandelbrot set, which is a, a to do with fractals, um, really is, is able to happen because of, of um, argon diagrams. And so, yeah, there's just some amazing properties that come up from these things being plotted like this. Trust me with it for now, and we'll see how it develops over the course of this chapter. So have a go at the questions in exercise 2A, um, and then I'm going to move on to the next bit now.